Unleavened Bread Ministries presents From your hands, your feet, your side Unleavened Bread Jesus Bible Studies with David Eels Can quench my thirsting soul Pure as water made me whole Let your streams of mercy flow Oh Jesus, I trust in you Greetings, saints. Many blessings to you. Thank you for joining us today for the Unleavened Bread Bible Study. Father, we uh, thank you for what you're doing in this world. It's unprecedented um, deliverance of your people, um, draining of the swamp. Uh, Father, uh, we don't deserve this, but you're giving us so much grace, Lord, for a, a little time to... Raise up the church. And uh, we thank you for that, Lord. We know things are going to turn back in the opposite direction because your people need a crucifixion. And um, it will come. It's just that the enemy thought to do it too early. And you're bringing an end to that for now. So thank you for your grace, Father. Amen. Well, thank you, saints, for joining us today. We're going to continue with a study we've been doing. We've called it The Bride Rewarded, Factious and Apostates Judged. And it's amazing, you know, the Lord uh, really gives us... I I concentrate on the prophetic end of things um, these last few years. Michael's uh, concentrated on, um, you know, um, maturing the saints. And um, that's because of what God is giving to each of us. So um, I, I'm i enjoying watching what's going on right now because it is the fruition of our prayers and um, uh, commands from God. So I'm going to start out with this revelation um, given to Eve Brast. Um on um, 512 this 19 and we called it draining the swamp it's uh, good news for God's people he said I dreamed that I was standing near the edge of a swamp that took up the whole dirt road in the middle of an old western town <laughs> Well, uh, she writes, this swamp represents the corruption in the Wild West. Yes, I agree, 100%. The um, sky overhead was overcast, which I believe is an omen of uh, darkness over the land. And I was looking in the direction of a front-covered wooden porch of one of the buildings in town. And her note is, the sun, S-O-N, has been obscured by the haze of corruption over this country. Yeah, and you'll find out when you figure out who's on the deck of that porch. Um, I saw a man who was a politician, one of our biggest problems, <laughs> and seemed to be in charge dressed in a tan tweed suit. He had light-colored hair and a single spectacle in one eye. And I thought, how much... Now, this man is negative in this text, but, uh, you know, just as God's people are supposed to be uh, single-eyed in the direction of the kingdom, so are these evil people that have been ruling this world. They've got one eye. Greed, uh, Satan, destruction to the Christians, etc., etc. You know, they're just, they're all pointed towards that direction. Uh, he also had a walrus mustache. You know, sometimes called a Fu Manchu mustache, right? <laughs> there were two or three men standing around him who were dressed like FBI agents with black suits and white shirts 
in thin black ties, and they were wearing dark black sunglasses. So as not to let too much sun in, right? They could, they can't see the sun. They seem to be taking over their, they are talking over, excuse me, their sinister plans for the town. Uh-oh. <laughs> the FBI has been involved, Eve said, in much corruption and criminality with evil government leaders. Yes. <clears throat> By the grace of God. Uh, they're being taken back, but they're still a very corrupt uh, leadership to uh, an evil part of the FBI. So, Father, we thank you for bringing all that down in the name of Jesus and bringing them to some uh, modicum of uh, reality. Yeah. I knew these men were dangerous. And I slowly skirted around the edge of the swamp to get to the other side and avoided detection by them. They were so busy with their plans that they took no notice of me. And her note is God will keep his people from their evil plans. Amen. So when I got to the other side of the swamp, all the local UBM people joined behind me and I knew that we had to wade through this swamp in order to get to where we were going, which we are. It's all around us, isn't it? I mean, it's in the government, it's in the church, right? And we're, we're having to go through this for a good purpose. We, for one thing, we're seeing God's salvation. We're learning to pray in faith. We're learning to do spiritual warfare. And we are winning, and we will ultimately totally win. So Eve said, God allows this testing to clean us up and to get us where we are going in his plan. Yes, that's right. It's a crucifixion. It's part of it. Um, it's necessary that we uh, be attacked by wicked people. Just as all of the people of God back through the generations were and are, it's necessary. I, I've said before that the Lord showed me that this is, uh, first of all, a crucifixion for the man-child bride before the tribulation. And then in the tribulation, just such a persecution will again begin um, very earnestly in the middle of the tribulation when the beast makes war on the saints, right? So once again, this is going to go back, you know, to what, the way it was. Hard to believe that people would choose that. It is um, the height of stupidity, but that's what these demons are. We call them the stupid demons because they make people very stupid. The swamp water was... Up to our necks, <laughs> and we were repulsed by it. And the feel of water weeds brushing up against our bodies as we kept searching for an area where it was possible to exit the swamp. Yeah. Amen. I noticed the top of a wooden structure in the middle of the swamp that looked like a gallows, where they used to to hang criminals. They, they used to. Yeah. <laughs> now they head the government. Um, in the town a long time ago, a long time ago when there was justice, they were hanging the criminals, right? But now it was useless because the swamp waters were so high. Yeah, you'd have to hang everybody, wouldn't you? Well, pretty much that's what... <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of truth to that, we can see. Um, the swamp was perverted and stifled justice. Yes, it had overcome justice. It had come into control of justice. And literally, there's uh, a lot of the justice, um, the judges, etc., that need to be put in jail, for they are disobeying the law openly, as though they had a right to do that. Um, 
But once it drained, justice will return to the West, Eve says. Yes. Um, Eve said, suddenly the angel Shemuel, or Shemuel, shall that stands next to the drain the swamp sign in David's house over the water filter. Uh, you know, yes, this is not a part of the dream. This actually happens. <laughs> We've seen him there, and he's got a sword, and he likes to tap it on that sign. <laughs> drain the swamp. It's a, literally a drain the swamp sign somebody gave us, and it seemed like a good place to to uh, to do it. The water filter, of course, you know, it filters out the, the bad stuff on top, and the good water comes out the bottom, right? <laughs> Um, so literally this is, this is over the sign and literally that angel stands there and we see him quite regularly. Um, he appears in our house regularly along with two other angels who stand in the, what we call jokingly the balcony. It's actually the upstairs, but between two doors and rooms, there's this walkway that looks like a balcony and one of them stands on one end of that balcony and one of them on the other end, and they're always watching over us and listening for our prayers and our spiritual warfare. And they they go forth quickly to do the things that we command in the Spirit. They go forth to conquer the enemies when we speak the Word. And they'll do it for you too. I mean, not necessarily the same angels, but... The angels who are posted with you will go forth to do these things. And that is, they love to drain the swamp in the church and the government. The, these people are becoming more and more corrupt and more and more wicked and more and more unable to see truth or speak truth. Uh, all they can do is lie. Try to lie their way out of their situation, which cannot be done, because there's nothing hidden that won't be revealed. So, uh, Shemuel appeared above our group to our right, hovering above the swamp waters. This is in the dream this time. <laughs> so, he shone very brightly. And his sandals were golden, as well as his golden curly hair. He still had the baby blue velvet sash tied around his waist. So she very easily um, recognized him in the dream. Right? And Shemuel means Shem, which is uh, the Hebrew for name. And El, which is the Hebrew for God, the na the name God. Now that's very interesting because, you know, when I thought on this, the first verse that came to me was Exodus twenty three, uh, twenty through twenty two, which says, "Behold, I send an angel before thee, to keep thee by the way, and to bring thee into the place." which I have prepared. In other words, the angels are bringing us into the promised land, the land of promise, the land that God has promised unto us. Now, there are several parables we've pointed out over the years, and that's physical land as well as spiritual land, this, this uh, life that we live, you know, this, uh, that is invaded by the Canaanites, the lusts of the flesh, and conquered by the Jews, the spiritual uh, man who conquers the carnal man, right? So we want to rule this land that we walk in every day, talk in every day, right? What where, where did your body come from? It came from the earth, did it not? Yes. So take ye heed before him, that is the angel, and hearken unto his voice, Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression. For my name is in him. <laughs> you see that? 
My name is in him. That is, in the angel. Uh, But if thou shalt indeed hearken unto his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. The best way to conquer your adversaries is walk with the Lord. After your crucifixion, the Lord will turn on the adversaries. Uh, Now this is clear, that the angel who bears God's name, meaning his nature and authority, that's why an angel, by the way, can prophesy a perfect prophecy, (laughs) which we'll see in just a minute here, Uh, meaning nature and authority, is here to lead us to conquer the enemies in the land. And as we hear his directions with humility towards God's word, he will be an enemy to our enemies. Amen? When has the enemy actually turned loose on you? You know, well, uh, they're turned loose on you to crucify the old man, and when that's finished, well then their job is finished. I'm talking about the vessels of dishonor. Their job is finished. So he was pointing to the politician and the FBI agents that surrounded him and was making proclamations and judgments against them and declaring the imminent draining of the swamp. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Ain't that good? And as he pointed his left arm and finger at them. They were, of course, completely oblivious to the judgment proclaimed against them. Only we from UBM heard the sentencing against them. So the angel prophesied proclamations of judgments against the faction. Praise God. I remember that we all let out a sigh of relief when the angel said this, especially Merlene, because she had been struggling because of her height to get through the swamp waters. Yeah, they probably were up to her chin. We uh, knew that relief was coming soon. And then I woke up. Well, In the political realm, this seems to be the reality on the ground that is happening, and it's pretty neat. Uh, She had this back on 512, and uh, just recently things have really turned in that direction um, to fulfill the prophecy of Shemuel. I took this from Operation Disclosure. Uh, it's an intelligence alert for May the 19th today. And it has a disclaimer at the top. So if people disagree with their intelligence, they have a way out. <laughs> the following is an overview of the current situation of the world based on intelligence received from several sources which may or may not be accurate. Or truthful, yes. That's the way it is with sources sometimes. But we're getting uh, some agreement on this. Okay. Um, here's, here's one part of it. High-level Earth Alliance meetings are taking place to prepare for the next stage of the transition. President Trump is expected to invoke the Insurrection Act. The Insurrection Act, passed by Congress in 1807, allows the president to deploy National Guard and U.S. military troops to combat rebellion against the United States of America. Well, we got plenty of that. Of course, the rebellious don't agree with that. But they're clearly breaking all laws. So, The act has been invoked by other presidents to quell violent uprisings such as the L.A. riots. 
Uh, let's see. The official cover story for this move is to remove illegal immigrants. Well, because they're illegal. And the people who are bringing them in are breaking the law. The people that are bringing them in should pay for breaking the law. Okay. Going on, it says, Sources believe that this move is the pretext for martial law and mass arrests once Trump declassifies FISA court abuse and misconduct, which has been trickling out <laughs> anyway, hadn't it? The deep state cabal is about to be taken down. Drain the swamp and MAGA were Trump's code words for the Earth Alliance's plans. The Earth Alliance is the people on the right, you know, that are trying to take down the deep state, in case you don't know that. And uh, this is taken from the uh, Dinar Chronicles. Um, on Friday, May the 17th, Trump announced a breakdown of talks on the China Trade Agreement ordered declassification next week of the Kami report and FISA court abuse, while Hannity on Fox News announced the Horowitz report was finishing and was devastating, devastating to the deep state. Right. The Comey, FISA, and Horowitz reports all named the FBI, CIA, Department of Justice, heads of the Democratic Party, and other prominent political elites and deep state players in unconstitutional, illegal, and even treasonous activities. So there, that's why he wants to, um, you know, bring the Insurrection Act out now. That's good. Now, I'll just say that they quite often suspect timing, you know, and quite often their timing's a little bit off, but ultimately it seems like it comes to pass. And it could be, it could be that it's about or happening now. So we'll see. But it is going to happen because it has been prophesied by the name of the Lord in his angel. <laughs> uh, this breaking news was likely, I'm reading on here, likely to trigger a stock market implosion to begin on Black Monday, May the 20th. Yep, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. It's been heading that way, and it's really, a lot of people don't know why this is happening. And, uh, well, it's happening because our economic system is being replaced. Um, this is on purpose that this is happening. Uh, something has been on the brink since losing all gains for the year last October the 1st, 2018. The stock market crash was on schedule and as planned so that U.S. Treasury holdings would be dumped thereby bankrupting the U.S. corporation, which we don't want, and eliminating their fiat dollar central banking system, which we don't want. <laughs> uh, a necessary move so that the new asset gold-backed quantum financial system, this is the one that's replacing it very quickly. It's a major miracle from God. Uh, could replace the fiat dollar and take over the global economy. Now, let me just take a minute and say this. Okay, I'm going to come back to this. President Trump doesn't know about the mark of the beast. We have a dream about that, that he doesn't understand that mark of the beast. Okay, but the dream also pointed out that you're supposed to forgive him. Uh there, there are Christians out there making war against the president. Some of it is false prophecy. Some of it is um, because of what, where this could take us. You know where this could take us, let me say. I should say, will take us. 
is this uh, this digital system that we're going to is going to make it even easier for the mark of the beast to come. But if you're of the illusion that we can stop the mark of the beast, that's really off the wall. It's uh, very wrong. And if you think it's the devil that's bringing the mark of the beast and him only, you're wrong again. Because it's God who is bringing the mark of the beast. He prophesied that it would come, and it would come through wicked people. Uh, Let me say this. The mark of the beast is to separate the beasts from the Christ. You're either a part of one body or the other. And uh, the mark of the beast identifies those who belong to the beast because they have no faith. That's right. They have religion. So God is draining the swamp of the church when he brings out the mark of the beast. And he will bring it out, and you can't stop it. And uh, by the way, the, the covenant with many in Daniel 9 wasn't made by a man. It was made by a principality. Just like all the other principalities in the context are spoken about. It's not a man. If he is a man, he's a 2,000-year-old man because it's the same one that did this back in the time of Rome. Okay, Just look at it and you'll see what I'm talking about. If you can read, you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, So so the, the the beast himself, the mind of the beast himself from the pit, is the one that is making this covenant. He is the prince of the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire, as you remember, went all the way from the thighs of Daniel's vision of the beast all the way down to the toes. So he's still with us. And he's still exercising authority, that beast, that principality. The principality of Greece was mentioned there too in that context. The principality of the Lord... Michael, his angel, was, was uh, m- mentioned in that context. They're not individuals. They are principalities. Okay? So, this system is going to replace the fiat dollar central banking system, which permits the uh, elite to rob and plunder us and get away with it. So this is going to be taken out of their hand for now. But as I say, the digitality of this system here is going to make it easier for the mark of the beast to come. And I and Trump don't really know about the mark of the beast or understand the mark of the beast, according to a dream we've had. And uh, so, so just pray for him that God will guide him for now, because what is the alternative? You can go back to a murderous bunch whose plan it is to destroy you now. <laughs> okay? And, and and actually they're going to try to do it. Okay? You can go back to them. You can support them by all of your uh, speaking against Trump. First of all, the Bible says pray for them. Right? Pray for presidents and kings. Right? So pray for them. Don't pay attention. People say don't pray for them. That's not the word of God. Okay, so anyway, I'm going on here. Uh, To add to the chaos that declassification was bound to cause, yes, these guys are, uh, are understanding that Trump is coming after them to put them in jail or worse. Uh, He is coming after them, and they're desperate to do something. They've tried to start a world war just recently. A little further back, they tried again. Uh, a little further back, they tried again. They've tried st- several times to start a world war. You know, these people don't care how many people they kill. And these are the. this is the alternative you want to turn back to because these prophets are saying uh, Trump is a bad, bad person. Uh, well, I'm just looking at what he is doing. Nobody's ever been able to do that. Only God is doing that. So the 911 tribunal is in full swing at Gitmo since January the 28th, and it was soon expected to be joined by arrests, trials, and tribunals 
on over 90,000 sealed indictments filed in federal courts across the nation, most of which named global elite perpetrators of child exploitation in Washington, D.C. and Hollywood. Oh, yes, drain the swamp, Lord. Thank you so much. Going on, global elites were being exposed as pedophiles and satanic practitioners of child sacrifice involved in an international child trafficking ring funded by U.S. taxpayers and run by the CIA through U.S. Incorporated, yeah, the British Crown and the Vatican. Since the beginning of the U.S. financial system, the European Crown and Vatican Bank, through through approval of U.S. Incorporated and their central banks, have owned and run the IRS, Federal Reserve, and their monetary disbursements, thus control the global monetary system until now. Well, anybody that tried to stop all this before is dead, including presidents. So, uh, so far, God is giving much mercy and grace. And it went on, within the next few weeks, the exposure of any or all of the above events could prompt a need for martial law, meaning get ready. Now, they've been saying, even the military people who are Q, um, they've been saying, have some food and water in your house so you can stay out of the way uh, when things start happening. Now, we've learned, of course, that they're going to spread spread plague. We've learned that they're going to um, use their uh, Muslim uh, people here in America who are practicing for their jihad to kill people and to bomb, and to burn buildings, and to burn churches, and all this kind of stuff. Okay. So, you you might want to stay out of the way. So, here's uh, another one, another part here of this. Part E, May 18th, 2019. Barr is to indict. Okay. Bill Binney former technical director of NASA, um, treason, is going to speak here about treason, a coup investigation, CIA and NSA uh, speak out, and of course there's a link here. And Bill is saying this, when I saw the incredible lock that high-tech coup plotters such as former FBI Director James Comey, former James Clapper, and former CIA Director Brennan have on communications, in other words, they have control over the news media by uh, the elite's money. They uh, have bribed the news media, and they're traitors. Um have on communications from the mainstream media to social media to Internet algorithms, how they control payment processors from Chase Bank to Visa to Patreon, and how they uh, demonetized the deplatformed dissenters, big and small, from Alex Jones to Milo Yanopoulos to, to me, And when I saw them take down Roseanne Barr, um, creator and lead actress of what was a most successful network TV show, whose 40-year career and reputation now counted for nothing because she supported the president and played a Trump supporter on and uh, played a Trump supporter on TV, there was very little else that I thought was as pressing. So over the past two months, I've lost 1,600 subscribers, many of whom had become alienated by the side I took in this unprecedented psychological civil war and coup attempt. Many of those who unsubscribed expressed anger at my right-wing opinions. It's all so surreal. I I was a left-wing liberal my whole life. 
until this attempted overthrow of the U.S. government from within ripped the scales off of my eyes. So here are the highlights of several videos I wanted to run this past week, but which I didn't because I didn't want to offend anybody. It was put together by my favorite new YouTube channel, Fight Globalism. So here's part, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to read on here. May the 16th, 2019, realignment led by Trump shakes world foundation. And that's a what does it mean article, which I read, which is very interesting and it is so true. I mean, this, how in the world uh, could this man do this without God being behind him? And he is Cyrus, because we've got personal words from the Lord on this, and we've had it for some time, and we had it before he got elected. So uh, he is Cyrus. And Cyrus was the one who was conquering deep state Babylon. And who is doing that? Okay, so he's Cyrus, right? Uh, okay, number one, President Trump was returning the nation to constitutional economics while destroying socialist globalist ideology in a battle against powerful socialist forces known as the deep state and the swamp. Number two, the Obama White House, there's links, all these are links, you know. The Obama White House orchestrated the Hillary Clinton email cover-up. Number three, that's another link. Hillary Clinton discovered to have received millions in illegal donations from a vile sex cult whose leader who is now on trial. Again, another link. Top Obama Clinton officials in the FBI now turning on each other as their plot to blackmail Trump gets further exposed. Yes, they are turning on each other. And of course, we prayed for that, and it happened. And so there's no honor among thieves. I mean, you just put the pinch on them, they'll, they'll turn on one another. Thieves and liars do that. Number five, the United States Court of Federal Claims just shockingly ruled that the Obama-Clinton regime not only outright stole the software put into the Obamacare health care scheme to make it work, they ordered the U.S. Justice Department to destroy evidence to cover up this crime, and that now has the potential to cost the U.S. government billions. Okay. Continuing on, May the 18th, 2019, FBI documents shed light on Mossad knowledge of 911. Well, we knew that. Okay. Um, there's a link there. I haven't read all of these, so some of you, if you see something in there, uh, let me know. Uh, May 17th, 2019, a report, your Ban from social media. White House provides place to report banning from social media. Okay, they've got that link there too. They're probably going to move on the antitrust laws in some kind of way here. Um, calendar of expected events. Presently in the works was a removal of cabal deep state elements in the two, 209 nations participating in the global currency reset. That is the um, revaluation of um, currencies and uh, bringing us all back under the gold standard and on and on and on. And on. Many things, many changes here. Included serving over 90,000 sealed U.S. federal indictments against political and global elites. At any time, results of the Gitmo 911 tribunal could be announced. Well, we know what's the truth there. <laughs> you know, I worked around buildings where they just had the framed structure because they just held a lot of equipment and walkways and things like this, no walls. But, um, you know, I, I know what they have to do to I-beams to keep them from melting. 
And uh, there's no way that that can happen. It's just it's not possible for that to happen. But, of course, they control the media, so nobody gets up there and tells them, hey, this can't happen. There's no kind of jet fuel that would that dump down through those beams that would cause them to melt. Not Nothing would do that. They got gunite on them that is um, heat resistant. The heat never even gets to the I-beam. You have to have an explosion uh, to get to that I-beam. And that's what happened. <laughs> Many explosions to bring things down, right? Um, so they have been trying this for some time, and uh, you're probably going to hear from it sooner or later. It's, it was a criminal government, even a right-wing criminal government, supposedly, that uh, plotted this and did it. So nobody's playing favorites here. Trump certainly isn't, you know. Uh, the enemies on both teams. Now, you can see a whole lot of uh, rhinos that are coming against Trump probably because they're threatened, even because they're in the satanic rituals and sacrifice of children or because they were in, nine one, in on the 911 situation to claim the insurance or whatever, you know. The, in some reason, they're trying to protect themselves by bringing Trump down, right? So this could be announced. And, of course, 911, it says here, was said planned by prominent political elites who had a practice of stealing funds from the U.S. Treasury and global monetary system. Remember the day before Donald Rumsfeld got on TV and said they lost Two and a half trillion dollars. And then they covered it up the next day with the 911 thing. And everybody forgot about the two and a half trillion dollars. That's what they do. So, what do they want to do now? Start a world war to cover up for all of this stuff that they've done. This is their habit. Early June, the IG Horowitz report would be made public. Hmm implicating in treason acts Obama and Clinton among their other political elites. August the 1st, the IRS was said to have been shut down in April 2019. August the 1st was expected to see a new income tax code announcement. Uh, this is a flat tax. This is um, uh, very interesting. No personal income tax, and uh, in its place, a value-added tax or 23% tax on new items only. No tax on used items, food, or medicine, with special exceptions for the poor. The flat tax code was said to be effective on January the 1st, 2020, although the attached link mentioned January the 1st, 2021. Okay. So uh, they're saying 23% on new items like automobiles. If you bought a new automobile, you'd pay 23%. That is until the government finds out exactly where it's at. And they believe that after that, they're going to be able to lower that um, much lower than it is. And there are things happening um, out there in the changing of this system and in the funds being supporting the changing of this system that is going to, in the short run, cause some trouble. Uh, in the long run, uh, it's going to help a lot. And in the longer run, it's all going to be reversed by the same people. Because when God gives Satan authority in the earth, he's got it. You remember when the king of kings gave authority to Haman to crucify the people of God? Mm -hmm. And then the man, child, and the bride petitioned him, and he took that authority away and gave it to them. Mm -hmm. So... So that's what's happening here. When the Lord gives authority over Satan, he turns people over to Satan, 
He, he turns worlds over to Satan. He turns uh, nations over to Satan. And when he decides to take that back, he can do it anytime he wants to. And he does for his purposes. So anyway, that's I just shared all this to let you know that there is, yeah, a draining of the swamp going on. And they're desperate to do something. So, you know, be ready, be prayed up, be on God's side, uh, because they're going to hit back. We've been assured of this. So meanwhile, God is paralleling judgment on this political, factious swamp with declassification and judgment on the religious, factious swamp. That's right. There's a parallel going on here. We've watched it. It's beautiful. And both have the same demons of faction, witchcraft, slander, lies, fornication of all kinds, and so on. It's all the harlot of Babylon. The dragon seeking to devour God's people. Almost every morning, a group of us gather for prayer and warfare, and we all get a word from the Lord by faith at random. Um, in all of these meetings, we get warnings of God's plan to drain the political and religious swamp of corruption. And, and, I'm, and I might also add that um, he plans on using the deep state to chasten his people and bring repentance and revival. So you see, God's got a right hand and a left hand. <laughs> yeah, and he uses his left hand and the way the left comes at you. So this morning, we got words by faith at random that are interesting concerning what we're talking about here. It's amazing that we get dreams and visions that point to all this too. Uh, and they they come at a at a good time, they all come together. It's very interesting that the Lord keeps doing this. And uh, let me say, I'm just going to share these words that we got. And first of all, I want to point out a couple of words we got that uh, point out this, that even now the deep state are destroying the food which the Lord will give back through His people. Yes, He has a provision for people through His people. And the deep state is destroying the bread baskets across America. They are controlling the rains. They are flooding out the farmers who can't get into the fields, who can't get their seed in the ground. And, um, and the seed is rotting underneath the ground, etc., etc. You know, let me say, Barry got this word this morning, Joel 1, 15 through 18. Alas, for the day... For the day of the Lord is at hand. As destruction from the Almighty shall it come. You see, let me say, the judgment against America and the judgment against the apostate church comes from God. And ultimately, the judgment against the deep state will come from God. We'll see all that in these words that I got this morning, that we got this morning. Uh... Verse 16, is not the food cut off before our eyes? Yes, we're watching it happen. Yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. Uh huh. So it's going to bring oppression upon the people of God. Uh, verse 17, the seeds rot under their clods. The garners are laid desolate. And the barns are broken down, for the grain is withered. How do the beasts groan? The herds of cattle are perplexed. Yes, I mean, well, so it is going to affect the the crops not being planted, not being harvested is going to affect the cattle. Because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. You might say the sheeple too. Okay, and another one in this category was uh, Don, Don Laughlin's, and he said, and he got Second Corinthians uh, eight sixteen through twenty one. 
But thanks be to God, who putteth the same earnest care for you in the heart of Titus. For he accepted indeed our exhortation, but being himself very earnest, he went forth unto you of his own accord. And we have sent together with him the brother, whose praise in the gospel is spread through all the churches. And not only so, but who was also appointed by the churches to travel with us in the matter of this grace, which is ministered by us to the glory of the Lord and to show our readiness. Now, what he's talking about is uh, they were taking up collections for the saints in Jerusalem who were suffering. Uh, their loss of business, their loss of whatever, you know, entitlements, you might say. <laughs> um, avoiding this, that any man should blame us in the matter of this bounty which is ministered by us. So they were um, collecting and um, being a blessing to the people of God. For we... we Take thought for things honorable, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. So, you know, there we go. They're, they're destroying the crops for a purpose. They're flooding and then desolating. They're flooding and then uh, drought and back and forth. And they just, and they're targeting the crops. So, yes, it's time to take them down, not only because they want to start a world war and kill millions of us, you know, but because they're trying to just starve us out. People that are hungry are controllable, especially when it's the government that's feeding them. So then we got a couple of words here um, that basically judgment is coming on the apostate leadership of Christianity by the hand of the deep state, which is what the Lord has shown us. Oh, missing, got this, Lamentation 2, 8 through 10. The Lord hath purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. This is apostate Zion, and the wall, of course, is their protection from the enemy. So he's not going to protect them against the enemy. He hath stretched out the line. He hath not withdrawn his hand from destroying. He hath made the rampart and wall to lament. They languish together. Her gates are sunk into the ground. That's not a good thing when you got enemies all around you, right? He hath destroyed and broken her bars. Her king, remember how Babylon, the bars were broken. You know, Cyrus went through, right? Her king and her princes are among the nations where the law is not. Yea, her prophets find no vision from the Lord. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit upon the ground. They keep silence. They have cast up dust upon their heads. They have girded themselves with sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. So this speaks, of course, of judgment on the apostate church. Because God has let down their defenses. And <clears throat> let the enemy come through. Okay, Tyambi got this. Jer uh, Jeremiah 2, 14 through 21. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Well, they're, they're supposed to be sons, not slaves, right? Why has he become a prey? The young lions have roared upon him and yelled, and they have made his land waste. His cities are burned up without inhabitant, which we've yet to see, but there's a lot of destruction on the cities, and of course, um, great destruction um, came because of the economy that totally crumbled under these past president and the one who wanted to be president. Um, the children also of Memphis and Tophanes, that's Egypt, have broken the crown of thy head 
Hast thou not procured this unto thyself? In other words, didn't you do it to yourself? In that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, who he led thee by the way. The church, the church has totally forsaken the word of God to go their own way. Whatever anybody else gets away with, that's what they want to do. <laughs> so, uh, and now, what hast thou to do in the way to Egypt? Now, that's what they're doing, going back into bondage by the old man. Remember the baptism in the Red Sea, right? It was to kill off the old man so that God's people would be free. Instead, now they want to go back to Egypt to drink the waters of the Sihor. Or what hast thou to do in the way to Assyria to drink the waters of the river? Thine own wickedness shall correct thee. In other words, what they're sowing, they're going to reap. Thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and a bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God and that my fear is not in thee, says the Lord, the Lord of hosts. For of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bonds and thou saidst I will not serve. For upon every high hill and under every green tree thou didst bow thyself, playing the harlot. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy, a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate branches of a foreign vine unto me? So God is again prophesying a judgment by a beast uh, on the apostate church which is typed here by the apostate people of God in the Old Testament. Because the things that have been are the things that shall be. Things that have been done are the things that shall be done. There's no new thing under the sun. Here's another one given to Judy. Ezekiel 39, 17-22 And thou, son of man, thus saith the Lord, Speak unto the birds of every sort, to every beast of the field. Assemble, assemble yourselves and come. <clears throat> Gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that you may eat flesh and drink blood. And, of course, this is because the beast came in and destroyed these people. Right? You shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, of goats, of bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan. Remember the bulls of Bashan prophesied to come against Jesus. Bulls, of course, were the leadership of Bashan and uh, represented by the Pharisees and Sadducees who attacked Jesus same as their same seed ha attacks his people today right you shall eat fat till you be full and drink blood till you be drunken of my sacrifice which I have sacrificed for you and he's talking about sacrificing the the flesh right and you shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots and with mighty men, with men of war, says the Lord. And I will set my glory among the nations, and all the nations shall see my judgment that I have executed, my hand that I have laid upon them. Of course, a judgment against the beast who has uh, conquered the land of Israel, or let me say their Christianity. You know, it's something that's ultimately going to come. We're watching it now. Are they through? No, they're not through. Listen, the deep state's very big. I mean, you can lock up a bunch of them. Some would step forward and take their place. They're just as demon-possessed as their masters were. So this is not a, on a, war, a war that's going to be over quickly, right? So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day and forward. Yep. You know, the Red Sea victory over the deep state faction is 
coming quickly. But first, the people of God were persecuted and basically run out of town. <laughs> okay, I'm going to share one more with you. Jeremiah 55 through 7. They shall inquire concerning Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come ye and join yourselves to the Lord in an everlasting covenant that shall not be forgotten. Yes, we have an eternal covenant, and it was our new covenant, and they have departed from it, <clears throat> and we are seeking with everything we can to turn people back towards it. And the same thing is happening in the government. They are turning away from their own law, you know, the Constitution. Their, gov their judges are, their governments are, so on and so forth. They're breaking their own law. And Trump is a constitutionalist, so he's trying to turn them back to the word, basically, uh, parallel. And um, they don't like it. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. First of all, why is there such a faction in Christianity? I'm talking about denominationalism, because that's a faction too. Just because we've had a recent more demon-possessed faction doesn't mean that this hasn't been going on for a long time. Um, there are shepherds who are dividing the flock for their own purposes to keep people from going to their neighbor and coming to them because they're the only ones that have the truth, right? That's what denominationalism is. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. So that's not very heavenly, is it? They've given up the really high places for the really low places. They have forgotten their resting place. And the resting place, of course, it's our, it's our spiritual Sabbath of ceasing from our own works to do God's works. Right? All that found them have devoured them, and their adversaries said, We are not guilty because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of the righteous. The habitation of righteousness. Even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. So there you go, draining the factious religious swamp too. So here's a, a piece of a dream from Eve Brass, uh, five nine nineteen. I dreamed that I went over to Jeff and Sandy's house. That's a place where we do prayer and spiritual warfare against uh, the swamp creatures and uh, to deliver God's elect from these demonic powers, right? It was in a neighborhood, and when I walked inside, there was a surgical suite in the middle and the back of the house. Jeff and Sandy had a living room and a small kitchen over to the right in the house. So Eve, ha having been a surgical nurse, uh, he puts things in, in her language and things that she understands quite often. And, um, and, of course, we know that the church is uh, doing is supposed to be doing just that, cutting out the bad and saving the people from the, the curse of sin and death, right? That's what the church is supposed to do. So as I walked around the surgical suite, I saw five men, five, laying on five stretchers. And, of course, five represents grace. So I believe that this that this is representing those who find grace through our prayers and warfare for them to be delivered of corruption. That's what you do when you operate on somebody. You cut out the corruption. <laughs> they were uh, in a row draped in blue surgical drapes whom the surgeons were operating on. They were performing brain surgery on these men. And this was, of course, in our place where we have prayer meetings to deliver people from bondage and corruption and so on and so forth. So I saw that they had totally removed the tops of their skulls and were digging out what looked like black caviar out from between the two lobes 
of their brains. Hmm. So, if not removed, this darkness would hatch out into spiritual and or physical death, wouldn't it? Yeah. Just trying to get a little spiritual understanding there. The the men were awake while they were doing this, but it didn't seem painful to them. Well, he brings forth a natural thing here, uh, that the brain does not have any pain sensors. And uh, this is often done in real life when the surgeon needs the guidance of an alert, awake patient. So, but let me say that this is accomplished for those who have grace through prayers and commands sent forth so that the sword of the word in the hand of spiritual surgeons cuts without physical pain uh, the dark seeds of sin and demons out of the mind and the heart. Okay, so that's our job, right? We have authority over all the power of the enemy, and we take authority, and God's angels go forth and do it. So for those that have grace, uh, the church will be given um, authority to come against their demons and against their bondage, right? Thank you, Lord. And Eve said, I understood that this was a neurosurgical suite where darkness is removed from men's minds through the two-edged sword of the word. Amen. And then Shalanda had one very similar to this. Shalanda Kelton, and she said, um, this was on 516, in the dream, I knew my sister was a prostitute, representing Christians who have failed and become members of the harlot. Right. So, I was praying to the Lord that he would break her computer. <laughs> and her note is, and very good, um, representing the mind of the flesh, the old man. And that was because I saw a computer screen in the dream, she said. I prayed that anything else that would keep her in prostitution, in other words, and she has a note here, serving other gods or idols, and, I, and I, my thought is of their bondage to this faction, right? She said, I went to my mom's house and she told me that my sister had stopped being a prostitute because her computer broke. And I said, good, that's what I prayed for. The scene changed and I'm in a mansion and my mom is there and she tells me that my father has cancer. Okay, let's see. Our mother, of course, is the apostate church system which we were born out of. And our father is the leadership of that harlot. He through whom we first we were first led and fed uh, in that system. You know, our first father, generally speaking, is somebody in that system who teaches us uh, well, it teaches us a lot of stuff we need to get rid of after we come out of it, but sometimes some of the basics, too. So that's our first father, right? So that's mother and father in this, in this dream. And uh, the faction are they that uh, fell away into that system of falsehood. And Shalanda said, I told her, that you have to come against that cancer using the Word of God. Yep, that's our sword. That's our, our uh, instrument to remove the corruption. I told her, when you wake up in the mornings, you immediately come against that cancer. And then I woke up. So, cancer here represents sin that eats away 
at one's life. We have to pray against it. We have to do warfare against it. And, you know, these these fathers of the corrupt system don't know any better, but they're headed towards a big, big chastening from God through the deep state. And, of course, the Lord is in control of all that. Then we got this revelation on 5-9 of this 2019, uh, given to Sandy Shaw, and Don and Merlene Laughlin uh, transcribed it for her, and we called it, she called it the old mission, God's provision and the clear word, the old mission. Mission is a play on words here. She says, in this dream, there is an old-time mission. Well, the modern-day image of the first church mission to the world, right? That's what this is representing. We, we want that old-time mission that was first given to the disciples by Jesus, right? The great commission, right? Yeah. So, some of it was made of old, crumbly, white brick and old-type cement or plaster mixture. There were round white pillars across the front that had arches that connected them. The floor was red and shiny. And I think that this means that the foundation for the mission is the blood of the Lord Jesus. She said uh, the floor was solid with no cracks at all. So she went on to say this type of floor was only in the front. Sandy, excuse me. Sandy said this. It's only in the front. And we know that the blood is the foundation by which we enter the kingdom so it was only in the front right let me say this you you know you walk by faith in the blood covering but there comes a time you don't need the blood covering and that's when you've overcome what is the blood covering but your failures right and when you're not failing anymore do you need the blood covering covering your failures no the blood is a means to an end that's why it's in the front here it's a means to an end When you're sanctified and holy, the blood has done its work, right? Mm -hmm. Merlene and I and Robin were standing, looking out at the land. You could see the till, rows of fruit trees, livestock of all kinds, every kind, horses, mules, donkeys, pigs, goats, sheep, chickens, and ducks. Merlene and I were holding perfectly folded white sheets in a stack. And I looked at her and said, I can't believe someone left this to me and Mama. Me and Mama. Well, let me say that the original mission is once again given to the bride through the mother church. And, let me say, and through the mother, to, through her to the mother church. So it's given to the bride. The original mission is given to the bride. And the bride is going to pass this on to the mother church. Kind of like in uh, Song of Solomon. How that um, the Shulamite tried to bring her mother um, into the presence of the Lord. And her little sister, right? Robin said... All of this? I said, yes, even all the livestock. You know, I still don't know who bequeathed it. (laughs) Well, our Lord bequeathed this to us by his death, right? Isn't that great? And uh, some people are finding out about all this provision that God gives through the death of Jesus. Merlene and I kept walking. 
We had gotten where we would turn the corner, and we saw Tim and Don and Leon and Brandy and Jeff. They were all carrying gardening tools, hoes, shovels, and picks. So these are workers in the harvest to come, right? At this great house. Workers in the harvest. Then we turned the corner and went into the first room. There were no windows in this first room. It was all white and had 12 twin beds. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, there it is, the rest, right? Twelve. Rest for twelve, right? We put the sheets uh, on the beds. As we were walking out the door, there was a small table with more perfectly folded white sheets. Uh, Well, we know that twelve is the number of the chosen or the elect. Eclectos is the word chosen, right? Um. There are 12 patriarchs in the Old and the New Testament. The New Testament's the 12 apostles, right? Uh, 12 tribes, on and on. 12 is the number of the elect. So the beds were for the rest of faith, I believe. You know, when you believe God's Word, you rest. When you believe that your promises are heard by God, If you believe you've received, then you rest, right? Jesus said, all things whatsoever you pray and ask for, believe you received them. It's literally past tense. And you shall have them. So that's when you rest, when you believe, okay, I just prayed and God's heard me. So I can go on to the next problem. (laughs) The white sheets are the covering of righteousness given unto them. Right. And then, walking to the next room that had 12 windows, 12 feet high, 12 times 12 is 144, isn't it? Hmm, that's the number of the man-child. So, the elect or chosen will be given great spiritual eyesight, discernment, etc., That's what windows are for. You can look outside the house. We were to hang the white sheet curtains. So I got an old wooden chair for Merlene and told her to stand on it. We can do all things through Christ. So Merlene took down the curtain rod and I'm feeding her the curtain and she puts the rod back up. So they're feeding the curtain onto the rod and putting it back up. We did that all around the room, throughout this whole room. I believe the meaning is that the discernment will be framed by the righteousness given by the blood. Right? Those curtains were righteousness, right? There was this cool breeze But the windows were solid glass. You couldn't open them. Yet the breeze was coming right through them. We could see the curtains move. Well, you know, Jesus said, um, you can hear the wind. You don't know where it's coming from. And you don't know where it's going to. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. Yeah, isn't that interesting? So this breeze represents the breath of the Spirit of God, which cannot be stopped by windows or anything else. And when we finished with this room, we went to the chapel to pray, which was through a connecting door. Everything was white. And I believe this, of course, is symbolizing the life of the people who inherit the original mission of, from Jesus, right? Passed on down through the Bible. The pews were white with white cushions. 
Straight ahead, a wooden oak base Bible stand holding a huge see-through Bible. Hmm. You can see water moving in it constantly. That is in the Bible. And that's because the Bible represents the living waters. Living waters in the Old Testament were moving waters. And this water was moving. I mean, literally, if you look it up, you'll see it. It says moving. They're not stagnant. You know, the stagnant part of the river of life that Ezekiel waded out into, the stagnant part was given up to salt. So it has to be living water. So he walked on out into waters to swim in and then waters over his head. You want to get as much of the Holy Spirit and the life of the Word of God in you as possible. So this is representing the living waters of God's Word that saves, heals, delivers, provides for God's people. And when you opened it, the the Word would pop up whatever God wanted to show you. It would pop up. So Michael Hare was standing in front of the Bible, and he opened it up. He was very excited, saying, Oh, my. Oh, my. And uh, getting louder. He closed it and opened it again. He said, I love it. I love it. Yeah, amen. Michael loves the living waters and uh, the works that bring forth, that they bring forth in us. And David was sitting to the side uh, in a white chair. And his hands were in a praying position. And he opened his hands and you could see through them and see the motion of the water like the Bible. And well, the hands represent prayer, but they also represent the works. And in this case, with the water in between the hands, it represents the works of Jesus, who is the Word, right? The living waters, right? Truly, the Word of God is living waters. I mean, it's alive. It's powerful. If you act on it and you speak it, you will see results, right? And so this this represents, you know, the hands being together to pray, opened and the water is seen. I think it represents the works of Jesus along with prayer, right? John 7 and 38 says, He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said. So the, the living waters have to have something to do with this, right? From within him shall flow rivers of living water. There it is. Rivers of living water. So you can lay hands on the sick and those living waters will go into them and heal them, right? And then John 14 and 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. That's the hands, right? The works. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. Amen. Good story. Maureen and I looked at each other and said at the same time, Did you see that? And then I woke up. And I tell you, it's going to be a shock to a lot of people in the very near future when they see the power of Jesus being manifested from humble believers. You know, let me say this. There are lying signs and wonders out there. The Bible spoke about them. But they're not the kind that set people free from Satan. They're the kind that impress people who are just looking for supernatural things, you know. They're impressed with that. Not really realizing that the devil is a supernatural creature, too. So the devil likes to deceive people with what he calls lying signs and wonders. 
But the real signs and wonders, they fulfill the will of God. They heal, they deliver. Remember, Satan doesn't cast out Satan. Okay, so uh, otherwise his kin- his uh, kingdom wouldn't continue. So Merlene and I looked at each other and said in the same time, did you see that? And then I woke up. So I would say that this is something that's recognizable. It's going to shock people. You know, when the the river of living water begins to be poured out in the days just ahead here. So I asked for a verse by faith at random and got Mark 2, 23 through 28. Now let me just say something about this text that... Uh, The Sabbath here represents resting from our own works as the beds that were made, right? In this dream, represent, that was resting from your works, right? And the holy bread that is mentioned in this context uh, represents the Word of God. So let me read it, Mark 2, 23 through 28. And it came to pass that he was going on the Sabbath day through the grain fields. And his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears, because they were hungry. Do you remember Jesus saying, uh, the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath? It's in this text right here. And that means... That if you're following Jesus like these disciples were, you're keeping the Sabbath because you're ceasing from your own works because you're following in the steps of Jesus. <laughs> you see how simple that is? Uh, so um, they they were hungry. And they were eating. So, But they call that works. You know, a lot of dead churches call anything that you could do for God works. You're teaching salvation by works. I am. God's works, not our works. By grace have you been saved through faith, and that's not of yourselves, a gift of God, not of works, meaning your works, lest any man should boast, for in Christ Jesus were we created for good works. Yes, indeed. So they plucked the ears to eat because they were hungry. This weren't the works of of man. This is a provision for God's people. And because they were following in the steps of Jesus, they were the only ones keeping the Sabbath. These people rebuking them for plucking ears, they're not ceasing from their own works because they don't understand what the Sabbath is. And there are a lot of Christians out there trying to drag Christians under the Old Testament Sabbath because they don't know what the Sabbath is in the New Testament. When we're told very plainly in Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4, it is to cease from your own works because of faith. Right. Your own works, not God's works. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, Did you never read what David did when he had need and was hungry? He and they that were with him, how he entered into the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the showbread, which is not lawful to eat save for the priests, and gave also to them that were with him. So he was hungry. And uh, what did Jesus say about that? And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The rest is made for man. It's not to make you caught up in your own works, as the law does. They were into their own works. They thought they were holy because they didn't do anything on the Sabbath. And Jesus pointed out, well, wait a minute now. You can do good on the Sabbath. It's, it's your own works you have to cease from. 
and that Sabbath was made for man. Well, notice also the little parable in there that the priests of God, who are the people who sacrifice flesh, right, uh, as an offering to him, can eat of the holy bread. And the, the people that that don't cease from their own works, they're caught up under the law, they can't cease from their works. They're feeling justified by their works instead of by faith. And woe be unto you if you cross them. They'll crucify you. They did it to Jesus. They did it to his his apostles after him. Yeah, they're mean and nasty because they don't understand the Sabbath. They're under the letter that killeth, not under the spirit that giveth life. But So the, the Sabbath is for us. It's to help us to do away with the works of the old man. Right? I asked for a verse by faith at random and got Micah 7, 17 through 20. Now let me say about this text before we get there that as it was with Jesus and his apostles, the apostates came to the Lord through the signs and wonders that came through their hands. See, that was what this meaning of the the living waters between the hands. Right? Micah 7 and 17. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. Well, that was the curse upon the serpent who told the lies, right? <laughs> Let me say, it's still a curse out there on serpents out there who tell lies, right? Um, they shall lick the dust like a serpent, like crawling things of the earth. They shall come trembling out of their close places. Remember we talked about the larger place and the smaller place, close places. They shall come with fear unto the Lord our God. This is what the church world needs, is fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, because they've got not near enough wisdom, right? So this is what we pray for our brethren that are caught up in all these little traps. And they'll come with fear unto the Lord our God and shall be afraid because of thee. Oh, but because of thee. Who is a, a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in loving kindness. He will again have compassion upon us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob. Jacob represents the church, right? Jacob the patriarch. Right? And the loving kindness to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. Amen. So, signs and wonders are about to come through the people who have loved the Word. And they, they're they not among the apostates. But the apostates are going to see the signs and wonders. And those who are the elect among them are going to repent and return to the Lord because of this. Isn't that awesome? Well, it's, it's, it's the pattern of history, you know, for the church. The overwhelming majority of God's people have been factioned against one another, all of them accepting some parts of the Word, but not their brother's parts of the Word. And so they're not able to enter into the fullness of Christ. What we have to do is throw all religion out the window and go straight to the Word of God. 
Can God send us people who are teachers of the word that are ordained of him? Of course, that's what the Bible says, you know, but they only speak what he speaks. They don't add their religious ramblings, you know. So, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would send revival among your people. That you would give rest unto your people. We know, Lord, that you're raising up a reformer ministry in order to pass on this rest. We've talked about it in the last couple of studies here, a little bit here and there. And uh, the rest is such a valuable thing because we get to cease from our works when we believe that God's going to do His. So many people read your word, Lord, and they don't believe what they're reading. You say, do you believe that? Oh, yeah, I believe it from cover to cover. Well, do you believe that all things whatsoever you pray and ask for, you can believe you received it and you shall have it? Oh, no, that that, that has passed away with the apostles, you know. No, no, no. They don't believe it. They've got all kinds of reasons why they don't believe it. They're apostate. Spiritual fathers have destroyed them from any ability to assimilate the truth. So, Father, we ask, Lord, that you bring the judgment that you said you were going to bring on the false leadership who is keeping your people in bondage, that you deliver your people through this rest, that they discover this rest, that they see this rest in the hands of those people who are your reformers and repent. And they see these signs and wonders that confirm uh, your will. I uh, spoke to a man in a foreign country just the other day that they're having a wonderful revival, a powerful Revival of the Word of God. And I don't dare mention what country because, of course, they're under Muslim rule and they would kill any Christians that they found. But they're having a wonderful revival and the Word of God is being respected and hungered after by ex Muslims. And um, thank you so much, Father. And I told the man, I said, well, you need read that book of Acts. And um, you know your, your witness is good. What you're sharing with them is, has been so very effectual. Uh, you just need these signs and wonders because these are what God uses to confirm the Word of God. When people see signs and wonders, they see a God who is real. And he wants to heal and deliver and save and provide for his people. And they've never experienced that kind of God. You know, they've experienced a very hard God that's always against, against, against. Never a God who loves and is for them. And a God who kills and all that. They're used to that kind and they're really fed up with it. That's why they hunger for the gospel. That's why they run to the gospel. Continue to pray for our Muslim brethren who are still in the world because they're going to come to God. And and they come easier, actually, (laughs) to God than the Christians do. Uh, You say, that sounds crazy, David. Well, it's just a fact. Uh, Christians take the word for granted. They don't hunger for the word. These people are hungry for the word. Hungry. They go without eating because they don't even think to eat because they're studying the word. Hungering for the word. They've been in a bunch of murderous, contemptible people. And um, they're tired of it. They want to see some respite here. They are always at war with one another, always. Nobody kills more Muslims than Muslims do. So, you know, listen, we need um, 
to get the gospel out is just what I told him. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. So these people that are spirit-filled, not not just religions that claim to be spirit-filled because they speak in tongues. They may have lost the fullness of the Spirit a long time ago, but they still have the gift, right? So, uh, not that. That's that's out there. There are many dead denominations, even of those that call themselves full gospel, which they're not. So, Father, we're asking for a great and mighty revival among your people. The opening of their eyes of what's really going on, especially our brethren who are truly our brethren, uh, if they are the elect of God among the faction and the factions of the denominations. Uh, Lord, open the eyes of your people. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy upon your people, Lord. You are, we're seeing such mercy in the draining of the swamp, Lord. And um, a judgment upon the apostate leadership of God's people, and especially the apostate leadership of the most recent faction, which is very nasty. They do everything they can to destroy uh, anybody that's sharing the gospel. And, uh, of course, they claim to believe the gospel, which is a lie. They don't believe it, and they don't speak it, and they don't act on it, and they don't go out to save souls. The only thing they want to do is destroy the work of God. So, Father, we ask you to open the eyes and give the conscience back to these people who have been plundered by these false leaders. Open their eyes, Lord. Let them once again hear their conscience. Speak to them. Open their eyes, Lord. Grant grace to those of your elect who are captured by these people and the faction of the denominations, Lord, the people who are captured by these. Let them see through this thing that it is not Christianity. It's dead religion just like all the rest of dead religion out there. It doesn't assimilate the life of Christ at all into their being. They don't believe it's even possible. And so they're traitors to the people of God. The people of God are dying for lack of the gifts that God gave to us through the outpouring of the Spirit and the blood of Jesus. He paid for our healing and our health. He paid for our deliverance. He paid for our provision. He paid for our salvation. He paid for it. And they're falling short of it. They won't enter in, and they won't let anybody else enter in either. So they're traitors. And I pray that even of the traitors, you grant repentance to the elect, Lord, but also especially the people under them, who are held in bondage and need deliverance, Lord, we ask that you set the captives free as Isaiah 61 anointing did in your day, Jesus, and will do in your day again, which is this day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for setting the captives free. Thank you for your mercy towards your people. And Lord, we we proclaim success to Shemuel's um, prophecy there of draining the swamp. We claim success for the government. We claim success for the church in draining the swamp. Lord, we proclaim it and we agree with it just as the people of old uh, believed your prophecies and stood upon them to receive the victory. We too, Lord, we want to see this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful victory that you have for your people. There's going to be such a witness, uh, this living waters that are going to be seen again among God's people, not dead theology. Uh, Jesus spoke as one having authority. He had living waters coming out of him. 
healing for the nations, as it's called. He had living water, not just theology. Theologians love to argue with you, you know, because they're proud of their theology. But does their theology deliver them? No. Since it doesn't deliver them, it won't deliver you either. So pray for repentance for anybody who is caught in that prideful religious trap that they would um, know there's nothing to this. We've never seen a miracle in our midst. We've never seen God do these things in our midst. And yet they haven't passed away. And Jesus said that all disciples would have this authority. And he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. <clears throat> Greater works than these, because I go to the Father. So, Father, we ask for the greater works of Jesus. We ask that you pour out your living waters, Lord, that people understand the Word of God. They're looking at parables, think and letter, instead of what is the spirit of this parable. And so they're not entering in, Lord. They don't have eyes to see, Lord. We ask, Lord, that your reformers bring eyes to see, bring that discernment. The 12 windows, 12 foot high, you know, the 144 that come to bring this new discernment, which is not new discernment. It's just new for our day. It was clear back in the apostles' day that these things were true. They gave spiritual revelations of the letter and the parables all the time. And that nobody's uh, applying the Word of God like they did. So, Father, we want that old mission. We ask for that old mission, Lord. The mission that you first gave unto your apostles. The great commission that you gave to them to go forth <clears throat> and to do signs and wonders and miracles so that your words of the gospel are confirmed. Thank you, Lord, for pouring forth of your Spirit upon all of your missionaries out there, which should be carrying the old ancient mission, but they're not. They're carrying the new mission of a bunch of dead churches. So, Lord, uh, Lord, you have converted many so-called missionaries out there in the field when they got away from their dead religions because of what they saw there and what they heard there and what they saw people were receiving there. And Lord, um, we ask that in Jesus' name that you change the heart of those missionaries out there that they would have the original mission that they would have the living waters, not the stagnant waters of religion, that it's all brought down to theology instead of um, saved, healed, delivered, and blessed. Lord, we ask that your people realize that this is what Christianity is all about. And all it's all been left behind, and we've been... We've been... Um, Judas into not accepting it or coming against it even. Lord, we ask in Jesus' name, grant grace, Father. Pour out your Spirit. Send your man-child ministry and uh, with the Isaiah 61 anointing that sets the captives free and opens the prison to them that are bound. Yes, Lord, that's what we desire earnestly. And Lord, um, you know, when the bride in Joel chapter 2 was attacked by the northern army and you heard their cry and the northern army had already marched through Israel and, uh, and Judah and they marched up to Jerusalem and their prayers were heard because they were your holy bride at that time. Uh, their prayers were heard. The beast was smitten. It came basically to its Red Sea. 
He came to the draining of the swamp. And your people totally rejoiced because they realized that you are God over everything. And Lord, here's, here we are today. Um, we're seeing the swamp drained. We're about to see it much more drained. We're about to see the Red Sea take down the enemy. And the enemy also is taking down apostate Christianity. All these are principles in the Bible that happen over and over and over. How can we miss it? So, Lord, we're asking for your mercy again here. We thank you for draining the swamp. We thank you for taking down the enemies. We thank you that no more shall the wicked pass through the bride, for the bride is a holy entity chosen of God and delivered from sin and sinners. And we thank you, Lord, for that. In the name of Jesus. You're cleansing your bride, Father. We see it. We understand it. It's painful, but we know it's necessary. We know that you must remove the leaven in order for the whole lump not to be leavened. So we know your good plan, Lord. We thank you for your good plan, and it is beautiful, and it is exceeding. And we thank you so much, Father, in the name of Jesus. Well, all right, saints. Hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you're encouraged by it. And uh, so you get to praying, okay, uh, against the deep state and the faction in the church. And you cast them down in the name of Jesus and pray for them that their minds would be operated on, right? Let your prayers cut out the cancer. Let your prayers take out the darkness and um, be God's vessel to do spiritual warfare for the saints in captivity. Thank you so much for joining us today. God bless you and keep you, and we'll do this again. Good night. For information, materials, and to contribute, go to unleavenedbreadministries.org. Contributions only may be addressed to David Eels, Post Office Box 231616, Montgomery, Alabama, 36123. Though the mountains fall into the sea, though the rivers rise, I still believe. For your mercy stands and your word is true, oh Jesus, I trust in you. And when I face that darkest night, what will be my guiding light? The shining rays of red and white. Jesus, I trust in you. O oh, sacred heart, in you I find mercy seated for all time. I am yours and you are mine. Oh, Jesus, I trust in you. Though the mountains fall into the sea, though the rivers rise, I still believe. For your mercy stands and your word is true, oh Jesus, I trust in you. Though the mountains fall into the sea, though the rivers rise, I still believe. For your mercy stands and your word is true, oh Jesus.